Uh, good afternoon. This is Gary Adams with the National Cotton Council. And I would like to welcome everyone to the Council's conference call and webinar regarding the recently passed Seed Cotton Program. With the new program taking effect for this year's crop, we felt that it was important to disseminate the information as quickly as possible, and conducting a series of calls and webinars is the best way to do that. Uh, just remind everyone that the conference lines are in lecture mode uh, throughout the presentation, and then we will open them up toward the uh, end of the question and answer period. Uh, and also, if anyone would like to download the presentation as well as the summary document, those are both available on the National Cotton Council's website at www.cotton.org. Just by way of uh, background and introductory comments, you'll recall that on February 9th, Congress passed a budget agreement that inc included supplemental disaster provisions for agriculture. In addition, the legislation included the seed cotton program as well as provisions to improve the safety net for dairy producers. The Seed Cotton Program represents the culmination of more than two years of concerted effort by the U.S. cotton industry to improve the support program by authorizing cotton's eligibility for the PLC and ARC programs within the 2014 Farm Bill. I want to recognize the diligent efforts of the staff of the National Cotton Council as well as the numerous cotton industry associations that worked hard to achieve this outcome. Dedicated industry leadership was also critically important in these efforts, and to those I offer my thanks. Achieving this new policy would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of Congressman Mike Conaway, Chairman of the House Agriculture Committee, and Senator Thad Cochran, Chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee. The industry is also very grateful for uh, members of Congress across the Cotton Belt for their support of uh, this program. Before we review the details of the policy, uh, let me address the importance of establishing a seed cotton program in advance of the new Farm Bill and why it was necessary to convert generic base acres beginning in 2018 rather than 2019. Cotton producers needed an, an improved safety net as soon as possible, and the Supplemental Disaster Bill was the last legislative vehicle to accomplish that outcome ahead of the Farm Bill. The Supplemental Disaster Bill provided an opportunity to a, add additional baseline funding through the changes for dairy and cotton. Adding new money would not have been possible in the Farm Bill process, and addressing cotton and dairy now will make the upcoming Farm Bill development a bit less difficult. Generic base acres are cotton based from the previous Farm Bill and were intended as a temporary measure to keep some support on those acres until a new cotton policy was implemented in Title I. The conversion of generic base in 2018, one year ahead of the new Farm Bill, helped ensure the budget resources currently associated with generic acres would remain within the new cotton program and with other crops that establish base acres by converting generic base to crop specific bases. If development of the cotton policy and conversion of generic base occurred in the context of the upcoming Farm Bill debate, there would have been many more interest involved who would want a portion of the generic base acre payments to go to their priorities instead. Strengthening the cotton program and converting generic base acres so that all payment acres are now decoupled from plantings should make it easier to defend and maintain the support levels and payment limit provisions that are critically important to agriculture across the cotton belt. With the approval of the provisions for cotton and dairy, the agriculture committees are in a much better position to move forward with development of the new Farm Bill. In the upcoming Farm Bill, cotton will be focused on maintaining the seed cotton policy. Our industry is also seeking some improvements to the operation of the marketing loan program, uh, increases in the uh, loan program for ELS cotton, enhancements in cotton flow, and increasing support for the U.S. textile industry. We anticipate the House Agriculture Committee uh, to move their version of the new Farm Bill out of committee by the end of the first quarter. Senate Agriculture Committee is likely to follow shortly thereafter. The committee bills must then be approved by their respective bodies and then work out any differences in a conference. This all needs to occur by September 30th when some provisions of the existing Farm Bill begin to expire. So you can see it promises to be a very busy year for Farm Bill development. 
Given the numerous attacks on agricultural policy by outside interest groups from across the political spectrum, it is critical that all of U.S. agriculture work together to defend the Farm Bill. Let me thank you for your participation in the conference call and webinar. Uh, we also want to add a special thanks to those that are hosting groups at their office. And if you would do us a favor uh, to give us an idea of the number of people that we reach, I would ask those with groups to give us a rough idea of the number at your location by typing the number of attendees into the webinar's chat window. We will take questions at the end of the presentation uh, with, the chat web, with the webinar chat window first, and then we'll open it up uh, for the conference lines. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or you need any additional information uh, after the webinar, uh, you're always welcome to contact your NCC member services representative uh, or contact myself or any of the council staff in either the Memphis or the Washington office. I'll introduce uh, Dr. Jody Campici, the Council's Vice President of Economics and Policy Analysis for today's presentation. Uh, so Jody, please take it away. We'll cover the 2018 Seed Cotton Program information. The information presented in this webinar is based on our review of the legislative language. Final details are subject to change based on USDA's interpretation of language and implementation. Seed cotton is designated as a covered commodity eligible for Title I, PLC, and ART programs in the 2014 Farm Bill beginning with the 2018 crop. Seed cotton refers to unginned upland cotton that includes both lint and cotton seed. The reference price is set at 36.7 cents per pound. The price floor is set at 25 cents per pound. The seed cotton marketing your average price is a weighted average of the upland cotton lint price and the cotton seed price. Lint and cotton seed prices are weighted based on annual shares of production, which means this will change on an annual basis. We take the U.S. upland co cotton lint production times the U.S. lint marketing your average price plus U.S. cotton seed production times the U.S. cotton seed marketing your average price and then we divide that by total upland lint production and U.S. cottonseed production. The marketing year average price is not final until the end of the marketing year. The marketing year runs from August 1st to July 31st. USDA generally publishes the final numbers for the marketing year in late September or early October. However, throughout the marketing year, USDA does publish monthly estimates and we will be providing a document on our website tracking these monthly estimates for the cottonseed price and the, cotton, and the lint price and then the seed cotton marketing your average price. So as an example, we use the current 2017-2018 USDA estimates based off the February report. So the U.S. upland cotton lint marketing your average price is 69 cents a pound. The U.S. cottonseed marketing average price is $150 a ton. To get U.S. upland cotton lint production, we take bales and convert that to pounds. U.S. cottonseed production is reported in tons, so we also convert that to pounds. We add the two together, and then we have total U.S. cotton lint and cottonseed production. So working through the examples, we just kind of fill in the numbers here, and if you go down to the very bottom, you'll see the weights associated with lint and cotton seed. So for lint, we would have 0.4233 times 69 cents plus 0.5767 for cotton seed times the cotton seed price, and we get a seed cotton marketing your average price of 33.53 cents. Okay, looking historically at lint prices, cotton seed prices, and then seed cotton prices, you can see seed cotton in the middle on the blue line. And if you take a look at 2017, you'll see two, 2017, you can't see 17 on there, but you'll see it out to the right of 16. The lint price increased slightly in 17. The cotton seed price decreased in 17. And if you look at the seed cotton price, you can see that it decreased from 16 to 17. Now, in, on the green dotted line, that would be the reference price 
of 36.7 cents. And then the black dotted line would be the price floor of 25 cents. So you can see in there the years where the seed cotton marketing average price was below the reference price, which would imply a seed cotton PLC payment. Now, the price floor of 25 cents, of course, sets a floor on the price that would be used in the seed cotton calculation. So we wouldn't use prices below 25 cents to calculate the payment. It would be uh, limited to 25 cents. Okay, this spreadsheet shows seed cotton marketing or average prices using different levels of lint prices and cotton seed prices. Now, if we look at the example we just went through, the lint marketing average price is $0.69. Cents. Cotton seed marketing average price is $150 a ton. So you can see in red the $0.33.53 cents that we just calculated. Now, if you want to look at a lint price, a lower lint price, let's say we look at $0.61. Cents. And go across where $0.61 cents meets up with the $150 per ton cottonseed price, and you'll see $0.301, so about $0.30 cents for the seed cotton marking your average price. You can do the same thing looking at higher or lower cottonseed prices, and you can look at this chart and see that any of the prices, any of the seed cotton marking your average prices, Below the reference price at 36.7 cents would imply a seed cotton PLC payment. Now this spreadsheet is available on our website and you can download the Excel file so you can look at this more closely. The seed cotton payment yield is equal to the lint yield plus the cotton seed yield. It's also equal to 2.4 times the lint yield. And this is because the cottonseed yield is determined as 1.4 times the lint yield. The 1.4 conversion factor is consistent with the approach used in crop insurance. The upland cotton lint payment yield is equal to the higher of the CCP lint yield or the updated lint yield. Producers will have a one-time opportunity to update the payment yield for upland cotton based on 90% of the average of 2008 to 2012 actual yields, not counting years in which cotton was not grown. This is consistent with the, the, uh, the, can you that out? the yield update option for other commodities during the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. And we'll go over this in more detail, but this is actually a owner decision where the owner does have to sign. Okay, let's go over an example. Let's assume that the cotton lint yield is 800 pounds per acre. The pounds of cotton seed would be 1.4 times 800. That would be 1,120 pounds per acre. To get the seed cotton payment yield, we would take 800 plus 1,120 to get 1,920 pounds per acre. This is also equal to 2.4 times 800. Seed cotton PLC payment would be made when the reference price exceeds the higher of the marketing or average price and the price floor. The seed cotton PLC payment rate is equal to the reference price minus the higher of the marketing or average price and the price floor. The seed cotton payment rate would be zero if the seed cotton marketing or average price is higher than the reference price of 36.7 cents. The seed cotton PLC payment is paid on 85% of the farm's decoupled seed cotton base. So the payment equals the PLC payment rate times the payment yield times 85% of base acres. And this is consistent with PLC and ART programs for other covered commodities in the 2014 Farm Bill. The programs are all paid on 85% of base. So looking at a seed cotton PLC payment example, we use the same price that we calculated earlier for the seed cotton marketing average price of 33.53 cents. To get the seed cotton PLC payment rate, we take 36.7, which is the reference price, minus the higher of 33.53 cents or the price floor of 25 cents. We take that payment rate, multiply it by 1,920 pounds, 
times 85%, and that gets us to $51.73 per base acre. And just to be clear, the payment is paid on the full seed cotton yield. We just go ahead and multiply it by 85% here so that you can see the payment that will be spread across the base acres. We only multiply by the 85% once in the calculation. Seed cotton base is established through the conversion of generic base acres. Generic base acres are not in effect beginning with the 2018 crop. For any farms with generic base and no covered commodities, including seed cotton, planted from 2009 through 2016, those generic base acres will become unassigned crop base and ineligible for PLC and ARC. So during 2009 to 2016, if one acre of one covered commodity is planted in any single year, the generic base would remain eligible. And ELS cotton is not considered a covered commodity under this program. And just to be clear as well, this only applies to generic base. This does not apply to existing base of any other commodities. So producers will have the following options to convert generic base acres to seed cotton and other covered commodity base acres. Option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average seed cotton plantings or 85 or sorry, 80 percent of generic base not to exceed total generic base. Any unconverted generic base becomes unassigned crop base and ineligible for PLC and ARC. Option two, all generic base is converted proportionally based on 2009 to 12 average plantings of seed cotton and other covered commodities. Option two is consistent with the base update option available for other covered commodities in the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. So let's walk through a couple of examples. In this example, generic base is equal to 500 acres. 2009 to 12 average planted acres would be cotton, 200 acres, corn, 300 acres, soybeans, 300 acres, for total covered commodities of 800 acres. So under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 200. 80% of the 500 generic base acres is 400. So seed cotton base would be 400 and unassigned base would be 100. Or option two, allocate the 500 acres of generic base to the following crops, cotton, corn, and soybeans. We take the ratio of each crop planted uh, on average from 2009 to 2012. So planted 200 acres of cotton, we divide that by 800 acres of covered commodities, multiply that by 500 generic base acres to determine how much cotton we would allocate. And of course, the total adds up to the 500 generic base acres, which would now be cotton, corn, and soybeans. Okay, in the next example, total generic base is 500 acres. From 2009 to 2012, we had 500 acres of cotton, 200 acres of wheat, 100 acres of sorghum, for 800 acres of covered commodities. Under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 500 or 80% times 500 generic base acres, which is 400. So seed cotton base is equal to 500, unassigned base is equal to zero. Or under option two, we allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton, wheat, and sorghum. Okay, the next example, we have 500 acres of generic base. 
2009 to 2012, we have 600 acres of cotton, 200 acres of corn, for total covered commodities of 800 acres. Under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres, 600, 80% times 500 generic base is 400. However, seed cotton base cannot be greater than generic base. So under option one, in this example, seed cotton base would be equal to 500 because that is the maximum amount of seed cotton base that you could have under this option. Unassigned base would be zero. Or you could allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn based on the ratios planted from 9 to 12. Okay, in the next example, total generic base is 500. From 2009 to 2012, 100 acres of cotton were planted, 100 acres of corn, and 600 acres of alfalfa, which is a non-covered commodity. So total covered commodities would be 200 acres, because we only add cotton and corn. Under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 200, or 80% times 500 generic base acres, which is 400. So seed cotton base would equal 400, unassigned base would equal 100. Or under option two, we allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. So even though only 100 acres of cotton and 100 acres of corn were planted during that time period, we still allocate the full 500 acres of generic base. So we would end up with 250 acres of cotton and 250 acres of corn. Okay, so we're going to look at a spreadsheet that shows seed cotton PLC payments per base acre. And in this spreadsheet, you can see the lint payment yield of 1,000 that's in red at the top. To get the seed cotton payment yield, you take 1,000 times 2.4, and that would be 2,400 pounds for the seed cotton payment yield. If we look at the example that we used earlier, we had a price of 69 cents for lint and $150 a ton for cotton seed. You can see a payment of $65 an acre. Now let's assume the price of lint dropped to 61 cents. And let's assume that the cottonseed price was still 150. Then we would have a payment of $134 per base acre. And in this chart, I've already multiplied by 85% just so you can get an idea of the payment that would be spread across all of your base acres. Now, you can also look down at the bottom and towards the right where you can see the zeros. And in those uh, cells, you'll see that there would be a zero dollars paid for the seed cotton PLC payment under those price scenarios. So you can take a look at 77 cents for a lint price and $150 a ton for a seed price and you can see that the payment would be zero. And you can do the same as you look across the spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet is available on our website. So you can download it in Excel and then you can go in and change that lint payment yield that shows 1000 at the top to whatever you want it to be, and then the uh, spreadsheet will recalculate for you. Okay, so let's look at a payment yield, a lent payment yield of 1,200. 1,200 times 2.4 would be 2880, and that would be the seed cotton payment yield. So looking at the same prices we looked at previously, 69 cents and $150 a ton for cotton seed, you can see a payment of $78 per base acre. And now let's look at a lint payment yield of 1,500. 1,500 will be multiplied by 2.4 to get a seed cotton payment yield of 3,600. Looking at 69 cents for a lint price, $150 a ton for cotton seed, you can see a payment of $97 per base acre there in the red. Okay, for other details, for the 2018 crop, the stacked insurance product may be purchased for acres of upland cotton 
planted on a farm enrolled in the seed cotton PLC and art program. Of course, stacks must be purchased prior to the sales closing date. For later years, including 19, uh, 2019 and later, both stacks and PLC art are not available on the same farm. So a producer would have to choose between purchasing stacks or enrolling in PLC, PLC or art for 2019. The non-recourse marketing assistance loan for Upland Cotton Lent remains unchanged in the 2014 Farm Bill with an Upland Cotton loan rate of 52 cents a pound for the 2018 crop. PLC and art payments for seed cotton are subject to the payment limit of 125,000 that applies to other covered commodities other than peanuts. Now the examples that we went through today are for the PLC program. We will provide examples for ARC on our website because a producer does have the opportunity to choose between ARC or PLC for the seed cotton program. So looking at the decisions that will need to be made, landowners will make the decision to update payment yields. If the updated yield is greater than the CCP yield, if not, you would keep the CCP yield. The landowners will choose between base update options. And I wanted to mention this because many of you will remember from the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill that landowner signatures were required unless the producer had a power of attorney for all decisions that allowed the producer to sign for the landowner. So looking ahead, you'll need to make sure that if you have a current power of attorney that it works for this and that it is valid. Producers will choose between PLC or ARC. Producers will make a PLC ARC election for the 2018 crop year on each farm with seed cotton base. If all producers on a farm fail to make a unanimous election for PLC and ARC, the farm will be assumed to choose PLC for seed cotton. And just to be clear, this is only for the 2018 crop year. So the next steps would be to gather similar information used during implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. This would include yield records from 2008 to 2012, planning history from 2009 to 2012. Now FSA has not announced the sign-up date. USDA is currently working on the implementation details. Your local FSA office is not ready for you to come in and start making these decisions. But at the appropriate time, you can visit with your FSA office for additional information. You can stay informed by checking our website, www.cotton.org, for updated information. This PowerPoint presentation, along with the audio, will be available on our website. We will also be including a document once we get into the 2018 crop year that provides the monthly estimates for the NAS, Lent, and cotton seed marketing average price, and then the associated seed cotton marketing average price. We'll also include a document that is, uh, includes frequently asked questions and answers from this webinar, along with all the other webinars. I want to thank you for participating in the webinar, and thank you for your support of the National Cotton Council. We will now open up questions via the chat window. And we can see some coming in, so we'll answer them as soon as uh, we get them. Okay, so the first question, is Pima cotton seed eligible for this program? So this program applies to upland cotton only, and this is just for the 2018 crop year. The next question, what happens to any unassigned base acres beyond 2018? 
So if your base, if you have any unassigned base acres, the legislation has directed FSA to maintain records of unassigned base. Now, the treatment of the unassigned base in future farm bills still remains a bit unclear. It will likely depend on, you know, budget issues and available funding as to what happens to the unassigned base and if it would again become base that could receive a payment at some point in the future. Okay, another question, will FSA be providing yield and planning history information to producers? So FSA should have this information on file. We've had several questions about what if a new producer was farming land that they didn't farm, you know, during 2008 to 2012 or during 2009 to 2012, how would they get this information? If the records are on file with the FSA office, the producer would be able to access those records for the use for this program. Additional records that can be used are also crop insurance records or additional production records that the producer may have, as long as those records can be verified in the case of an audit. Okay, one question about the, 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 that you had to plant uh, cotton from 2009 to 2012. So it says it takes just one acre of cotton to be planted over the 2009 to 2012 period for eligibility. Okay, the eligibility criteria is from 2009 to 2016. And yes, it does take just one acre of cotton, upland cotton, in any of those years. So it doesn't even have to be one acre in every year. It's just one acre in any of those years. And then for the base update options under option one and option two, if you were to use option two, then that would depend on the acres planted of all covered commodities from 2009 to 2012. Okay, the next question, can the producer not enroll in PLC for a given year and have stacks after 2019. So on a farm, if the seed cotton is enrolled in PLC or ARC, you could not have stacks on the cotton acres on that farm after 2019. 2018 is the only year that you can have both. Okay, the next question, will cottonseed marketing your average prices be based on cottonseed oil only or will it include whole cottonseed sales prices? The way that the current NAS marketing average price for cottonseed works is it's based off the Jennings report. So on a monthly basis, gins turn in their records or their survey to NAS that reports cottonseed production and cottonseed prices paid to farmers. This does not include cottonseed oil. We are putting together a document that describes this process a little more clearly because we've had a lot of questions about how NAS determines the cottonseed marketing average price. It is a national price that is weighted based on production and marketing for the year. Now, one other thing that I want to make a little bit more clear from the question about whether ELS uh, is covered under this program. So the ELS plantings, of course, do, are not considered a covered commodity whenever we look at 2009 to 2016. However, during that time period, if one acre of any covered commodity, which in could include upland cotton or any other covered commodity was planted in any year from 2009 to 2016, 
the generic faith is still eligible for conversion. So under this scenario, under option one, you would use, you know, if you planted any upland cotton from 2009 to 2012, you would use the higher of that number or 80% of generic base. And that would be converted to seed cotton base. This is paid on decoupled seed cotton base. So seed, uh, upland cotton does not have to be planted to receive that payment. So I just wanted to be clear on that, that really where the ELS question comes into play is if it's one of the covered commodities that you're looking at over the 2009 to 2016 uh, time period. Okay, one question, will FSA produce a worksheet for the option to select yield and base, much like they did in 2014 when we were choosing reallocation of other crops? And my answer is yes, I would assume that they would, USDA is currently working on implementation, and actually uh, Gary Adams just went to get on a call with USDA to discuss the implementation. So I would assume that they would do the same thing and do things very similar than they did that they did during the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. Okay, another question. After the first year, can I grow cotton and not participate in PLC if I elected PLC in 2018? And our answer is yes, you should be able to. That is the intent of the legislation. Each year, you would be electing, so you would make a one-time election between PLC or ARC for seed cotton. Then each year, you would choose to enroll in PLC. If you made the PLC election, then you would choose each year to enroll in it. So in a given year, you could choose not to enroll in PLC and instead purchase stacks or not purchase stacks, whatever uh, you decided to do. We assume that this will apply for the next Farm Bill, but of course, details of the 2018 Farm Bill are currently in the works, so we'll have to wait till uh, those final details are announced. Okay, if a producer with generic base did not plant any covered commodities since 2009, will they still be eligible for 80% of generic base? To be eligible, the producer must have planted at least one acre of one covered commodity in any year between 2009 and 2016. And again, this was where the ELS question came in. ELS is not considered a covered commodity. Okay, another question, is expired CRP eligible for seed cotton base? Now we've had this question a lot and we are working on the answer and that is something that we are gonna to talk to FSA about, but we don't really have a clear idea yet of how this will be handled. This will be something that will be taken care of in implementation and in the implementation guidelines. So as soon as we have information, uh, we will provide this to you. Okay, we have some more questions coming in, so I'm just waiting for them. Okay, the next question, what is the marketing or average price for seed and lint from 2014 to 2017? Now, I don't have this sitting right in front of me, 
So we will post this on the website. There will be, we'll also post historical calculations for the PLC and the ART programs in a document on our website. Okay, one question. Crop insurance subsidies are currently not included in any of the payment limits. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Crop insurance subsidies are currently not included in the payment limits. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, ch the chat questions have slowed down, so we're actually going to open up the conference line. We're going to try to as long as there's not too much background noise. So if you have questions that you want to ask over the conference line, feel free to do so. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. The conference is in lecture mode. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. Okay, does anyone have any additional questions? Is there anything that uh, wasn't quite clear? Jody, this is Dan Thielander. If Dan. the uh, marketing year uh, you set in in what, August 31st? July 31st. It goes from August 1st to July 31st. So we're we're well at, uh, over halfway through the marketing year. So how much can uh, what percent of the lint and seed is already marketed? If you just had to take a while to test. I would have to check on that for you. And I can send you the information because I don't know off the top of my head. And this is, of course, for the 2017-18 marketing year. 17-18 marketing year will end on July 31st, and then the 2018 marketing year, which will apply to the seed cotton program, will begin on August 1st, 2018, and run through July 31st, 2019. Okay, yeah, I didn't understand that. So the, the marketing year for this program starts on July the 1st of 18. August 1st. That's August 1st. Okay. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Everybody's confused. Everybody's confused. That's what I just heard. Okay, well, please let us know if you think of other questions, and please check the website. Of course, we'll be having we'll have a lot of information on the website, and I want to be respectful of your time, but make sure that we've answered all your questions. So if there are no other ones, we will go ahead and end the conference call. Thank you. Thank you.